welcome in to New Vision Family Fellowship. As we always say, we are glad that you are here. We pray that you would uh, get a blessing out of God's Word today and uh, that you would be able to take God's Word out there to those that need it. Amen. Amen. So we're in Genesis chapter 2 beginning this morning. And I want to look at um, the subject of sin this morning, not to beat you over the head with it, because uh, let me just ask, is there anyone in here this morning that has never sinned? Raise your hand. I don't see any sins that... uh, I don't see any people that have not committed sin. But I want us to look at the beginning of earthly sin, the beginning of human sin, the the downfall of man. And I want us to examine it this morning, and I pray that... um, um, I'm, I'm praying that uh, my earnest prayer is that God would bless the word, that you wouldn't hear my words, but hear his words. And we all know basically the creation story, right? God rested on the seventh day. Um, and after that, he created man, then he created woman. And as we will read, he placed a, a tree, or two trees actually, in the garden and said, don't touch them. Don't touch them. I'll give you anything and everything else, but don't touch those. In verse 15 of chapter 2, verse 15 of chapter 2 of Genesis, it says this, Then the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. At that moment, God was basically letting the man know you can live forever. You can live forever. This is your domain. I have given you a beautiful garden to live in. I will supply every single need you have. You will walk with me. You will talk with me every single day. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But all you have to do is follow one rule. Follow one little rule. Don't touch that tree. Don't touch that tree. How many times have we told children, don't do it? Don't do it. I am reminded of myself Friday night. Cindy and I's favorite Mexican restaurant reopened they had closed to remodel and it reopened and we were excited and let's say we're going to go back to our favorite place and see what it's like we go there we placed our order the young lady brought it out she had hot pads on her hands she laid the plates on the table and she said don't touch them They're really, really hot. What's the first thing I did? I wanted to see. 
you know, and I kind of scooch the plate a little bit, and guess what? It was hot! Folk, that is nothing but human nature. How many times have you gone into a building and seen a sign that said wet paint and you just got to try it? You just got to try it. Human nature. Human nature. Verse 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. Because he knew how much trouble us men could get into. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky. And brought them to the man to see what he would call them, whatever the man called a living creature. That was his... Yeah, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and the birds of the sky and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept, and then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. The Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed." So now you've got two people. Adam's job is to, first we see that he named all the animals. God made him a helper. All God had to do was instruct the woman, hey, God told me we can have anything we want. We can do anything we want. There's only one exception to that rule, and we cannot touch that tree. Don't touch that tree. And I'm sure, I'm sure that she looked at Adam and said, Okay, boss, got it. Right? Verse, or verse 1 in chapter 3 says this Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said to the woman Indeed has God said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden question mark The woman said to the serpent From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. Now what that tells us right there is that the woman knew. She knew the rules. We've heard the old saying, ignorance of the law is no excuse. She wasn't ignorant of the law. She knew the rule. She repeated back to the serpent the exact rule, right? No doubt she picked up the Garden of Eden rule book, right? Has one page. She opened it up. Do not eat or touch this tree. Right there, Mr. Serpent. It's written. But something in the human nature wants to doubt. Something in the human nature wants to question. Right? Something in the human nature wants to see if the plate is really hot. Right?
Verse 4. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now listen. Was the serpent lying when he said that? No. Because it was the truth, what he said. You're going to know good and evil just like God does. Right? And what that boils down to is this. There was a hedge of protection, right? A hedge of protection over Adam and Eve. Right? God basically put a force field, if you would, around them to protect them from knowing good and evil. Right? You, you might say, but Brother Charlie, all they were was, as some commentators have said, mind-numb robots. No, it wasn't that at all. It's that God's protection was on them. Nothing could harm Adam and Eve at this point. Nothing. The devil himself could not touch Adam and Eve. No way, no shape, no form, nothing could touch them. Verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise... She took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Can I ask you a question? For those of us who used to readily overindulge in alcoholic beverages, it never was fun to drink alone. You know, we wanted to get our party on, right? We wanted to invite everybody else into our sin, right? And that's exactly what Eve did. The only one she knew, she went to Adam and said, Hey man, <laughs> check this out. This is good stuff. I've tried every other fruit in the garden, but I'm telling you, this one tops it all. Right? Kind of like when I was a teenager and I was drinking and drugging and everything. Hey man, I know you've smoked some good stuff, but wait till you get this Acapulco gold, man. It'll blow your mind. That's exactly what's going on here. Number seven, verse seven. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. In a second, in a moment, the hedge of protection was lifted immediately, right? Immediately. I kind of liken it to my young grandson who is potty training right now. If the boy has any clothes on at all, they're going to get wet, right? But if he ain't got any clothes on, everything's all right. Papa, potty. Papa, potty. He lets us know. You can put a pair of shorts on that boy, 
five minutes. They're wet as all get out. Audie, did you forget about something? Uh-huh. <laughs> Running around all over 10 acres of farm like Adam and Eve. Don't bother him a bit. But listen, one day it will. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but hear me, folk. At that moment in time, Adam took a bite of whatever that fruit was. Okay? Society would have you believe it was an apple. We have no idea. But he took a bite of that fruit and in an instant, bam! Wait a minute, something's wrong. Wait, wait a minute. Eve, do you realize you're naked? <laughs> well, Adam, do you realize you're naked? We have passed the point of no return. It's over. We better cover this up quick. So they are trying to fashion clothes out of leaves. In their quickness to try to cover it up. To, to the point of... In verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Can I ask you a question today? First of all, does your sin bother you? When you sin, I surely hope it does. I surely hope it does. But if one of us, one of us, went out last night and tied one on and woke up this morning with a bad headache, knowing, oh, it's Sunday morning. Oh, man, I can't go to church like this. Or maybe you had a good fight with the wife or the husband. What we have to understand is sin always has and sin always will force us into a separation from God. Do you follow me? They hid they hid. You don't want to walk in here with a hangover and have to explain or lie to your brothers and sisters in Christ why you got a throbbing headache and you don't look so good and maybe even you don't smell so good, right? You don't want to explain that. So what do you do? You separate yourself from the house of God. I'll be better next week. It's the same thing here. Adam and Eve put themselves into a forced separation from God himself. Cover up number one. Verse 9. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? How many of you know that God already knew? Right? Mama, 
How many times have you, have you had to look at that child and say, did you do what I told you not to do? And I'm going to tell you this. The Fisher boys could come up with the best excuses. They were good ones. Right? I hid myself. I, I separated myself from God. And he said... Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Verse 12. The man said, now this is, I hid myself. I've been found out. There's no way for me to get out of this. So what am I going to do? I'm going to pass the buck. Right? I'm going to pass the buck. I'm going to push it off on somebody else. The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me. Now he's trying to put the blame on God. Right? If you wouldn't have given me that woman, she wouldn't have eaten from the tree, and she wouldn't have given it to me. <coughs> verse 13 or verse 12 again. The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? Now she's got to come up with her excuse. She's going to pass the buck again. And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Oh, man. So it goes from one situation to another situation to another situation. Pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. I have a generational curse. We want to blame everything and everybody except our actions. Right? You know what that's called? Take responsibility for what you did. You're part of it. Right? The Lord God. Now, the, the Lord goes from talking to Adam, talking to Eve. Now he's going to actually talk to the serpent. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you. These are the consequences, right? Consequences. I've heard parents use that term. If you do this, there's going to be consequences. Here they are. Because you have done this, cursed are you more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, or fear basically, and between your seed and her seed. That means all generations. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it. 
all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them, the very first sacrifice. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now he might stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he stationed a cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. Perfect example of this whole thing happened yesterday. And it just came to my mind this morning. We moved there on the farm. We moved some more mature chickens out of our brooder cages and into a big open area on pasture. We put a wire netting about 50 by 50 all around them, gave them, gave them four or five more times the amount of room to run and do what chickens do, scratch and eat bugs and the whole nine yards, right? They had all this space. We got it all set up for them. We put, it in a, put them in it, and they were running around and frolicking and doing what chickens do, right? Yesterday afternoon, late, Dwayne, I went out there, and I noticed something. All of the chickens were right up next to the fence with their heads stuck through the wire trying to get out. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. I just built you a beautiful area. There's food. There's water. There's clean grass. There's bugs, there's worms, anything a chicken would want. But here they are with their heads poked through the wire trying to get out. Isn't that just like Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve put them in a protected, beautiful place. All of their needs supplied and they did everything they could to get out. And guess what? They did. See, if those chickens get out of that enclosure, there could be a wild dog, there could be a coyote, there could be a bobcat, a raccoon, a hawk, anything like that can get them and snatch them up and they would die. Right? God knew that if Adam and Eve took the, made the choice to go out of the garden, they would die. That's why he said there, the day you eat of it, you will die. The hedge of protection will be taken off. You will no longer be in your physical bodies immortal. Folks, listen. Is that not exactly like us. God gives us the rule book, the Word of God. He gives us countless examples of people who messed up. I am so thankful that He didn't just put the rules in the book, right? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not right? He put examples in there for us 
of people that did what they shouldn't have done and the consequences that came afterwards. Right? You look at King David when he took Bathsheba as his wife and had her husband killed on the battlefield. There were absolute consequences to those actions. The baby that came out of that relationship died. Right? David, after that, had nothing but trouble in his life. Folk, listen. I'm not so naive as to not know that we're not going to sin. Every single one of us, while we're in this flesh and blood, are going to sin. Every single one of us. But God has made a way out. Amen? He's made a way out through His Son, Jesus Christ. He says, look, because of what Adam, Adam and Eve did, it all rolled downhill to you. But I've got a way out. I've made the sacrifice that, that was meant for you. I took the penalty that was meant for you to cover your sin so that you could still live forever with me in heaven. Listen, folk, one way that, and I personally think the best way that you can know that you're a Christian is that when you sin, it bothers you. You want to hide from God. Amen? So you at least you know you're a Christian. Because before I was a Christian, my sin didn't bother me. Anything goes. Woohoo! Now it bothers me. In every way, shape, form, and form. But hear me, folk. God's made a way out through His Son, Jesus Christ. And I am so, so thankful for that. So thankful. We have been reading in Revelation on Wednesday nights about all the destruction that's going to come after the rapture. All of those on earth are going to have to go through some stuff. Amen? We've been reading about it. If you haven't read it, boy, go in there and look at it. It's horrific. And I... My faith stands with Jesus Christ and I'm going to be there with Him. I'm not going to have to go through it. Praise the Lord. And I hope you won't either. And you say, but man, that's the wrath of God. That's some bad, heavy stuff coming down on them people. Doesn't God care? What we deciphered and discerned and, and learned Wednesday night, it's because He cares. He's given them one more chance. One more chance. <laughs> one more chance. He's given them a do-over, as we used to say as kids. Folks, I thank God for do-overs. I do. I don't know where you are today, but my heart's prayer is that you'll reach out to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you'll ask Him to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and, and make you one of His children. Turn from your sin. None of us are perfect, and we're not going to be this side of heaven. But I promise you, God will meet you right where you are. Cry out to Him. Ask Him to make you His child. Put your faith in Him. And I'm telling you, according to the Word of God, He will. The Word says, if we'll confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you today. And God, we thank you that you put the examples in the book for us of what sin does, how it destroys, Lord. Help us, God, to keep our faith in you 
keep our eyes on you, Lord. To not waver to the left or the right. But Lord, stay on the narrow path. Lord, when we do sin, help us to see it immediately, Lord, and fall on our knees and ask you for forgiveness. Help us to recognize the things in our own life, Lord, that we need to work on, that we need to do better at. And most importantly, Lord, help us to spread your gospel to those who are out there with love, Lord. Help us to speak the truth in love. And God, we'll thank you for all you do for us. In Christ's name, amen.